Good afternoon and welcome. My name is John Coatsworth. I'm the provost of the university. The president is traveling or he would be here. Um, welcome to this World Leaders Forum, which is sponsored, co-sponsored by the Columbia University Libraries, the Weatherhead East Asian Institute, and the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures. I want to recognize uh, James Neal, our outstanding university librarian, Jim Cheng, director of the Star Library, and Professor Lydia Liu for all they have done to organize this event and bring us together here today. Thank you all. I also want to acknowledge our guests from the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China who helped to make today's event possible. Welcome. On behalf of the university, I am honored to welcome Mo Yan back to the Columbia campus. We were privileged to have him visit us five years ago in 2009. Since that time, Mo Yan was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. This honor, signifying the very pinnacle of literary accomplishment, is evidence of at least two things. First, that the world has come finally to recognize and embrace Mo Yan's remarkable talent and artistry. His work is deservedly finding an even wider audience now. And second, that Columbia was just a few steps ahead of the Swedish Academy in realizing his importance in the world of literature and society at large. We take pride in Colombia's history of promoting cross-cultural exchanges between the United States and China. Many of you in the audience are familiar with these long-standing initiatives. By a wide margin, more of Colombia's international students and foreign scholars are from China than from any other nation. This is neither a recent phenomenon nor has it occurred by accident. Columbia was one of the first U.S. universities to establish a Chinese studies curriculum. Early in the 20th century, Columbia was a leader among American schools in granting doctoral degrees to Chinese students. Several of the Chinese scholars educated at Columbia went on to play significant roles in the emergence of modern China, not least among them former prime minister and diplomat Wellington Ku and noted philosopher Hu Xie. The name Mo Yan, a pseudonym meaning don't speak, <laughs> was chosen with a nod to the political atmosphere of Mo Yan's youth and no small amount of ir and irony, since this order of silence has proved impossible for him to obey since his very earliest days. Mo Yan, we are grateful for all that you have spoken through your magnificent writing and storytelling, and we are grateful too that you have decided to return to Colombia and visit us once again. Please join me in welcoming Mo Yan. Uh, so the, the president um, gave me uh, the welcome. So the audience also left. Uh, I don't know what he said about me. So in China, I, I had a chance to study English at that time. But when I learn English, uh, English or so in writing fiction, I have a choice. So I think, uh, think uh, writing a fiction is better for me. At that time, my decision was a stupid decision. Because half months later, after I go back to China, I think puppy is a smart choice. Maybe writing fiction or learning English is a perfect decision. However, maybe in this life, I don't have such chance to do both. This is my sixth time to come to the United States. Every time I come to the United States, uh, I don't English. It's a very painful experience. Every time in United States, is that United States, I decided after I go back to China, I really want to learn a uh, three hundred words of uh, English. After I go back to uh, Beijing, um, I lose my uh, decision. I lose my uh, passion to learning English. Maybe I have uh, another. Uh, my daughter. Uh, she studied English. My daughter studied English. So in the morning, she, she gave me uh, 
egg and should take care of my breakfast when I'm here. So I hope that there was a development. 10 or 20 years later, there will be a very uh, comedian machine um, in my, with me. Then I talk to the machine. The machine will uh, translate the uh, language into English. I will turn on the machine and uh, will, turn, uh, will tell me how to speak that in English. This is not very difficult, I think. So maybe it's not a matter whether I learn English or not because there was such a machine. So I think due to the time uh, constraint, I will tell you um, what we're going to say today. Then I will leave time for us to have an interaction. Before this trip, uh, it was such a dilemma. There was a very high ceiling. This, uh, the stage is very high. It's a very, very high-end forum. So what do I say uh, in this forum? So I think about it. And uh, there are a lot of issues and questions. Maybe I can talk about. Maybe, maybe there's uh, no any question that I can detail talk about. Maybe I can talk about something I c I'm really uh, good about, and uh, it's fiction, writing fiction. Writing, uh, writing a fiction is the uh, art of uh, language, also the right, uh, art of uh, construction of, of the uh, character. I write about hundreds of characters. In these fictions, I uh, portray many characters. Every, every character has its own origins. But because the uh, time limit, I will uh, let you know some meaningful, um, my key characters uh, in my novels, in my fiction. Uh, first of all, as my famous uh, work, uh, Transparent Carrots, there is a, a black kid in, my, in the fiction. This uh, kid, the age or his name was not very clear. Just say that his skin is very black and a very big brain and a very, very skinny ear and a very bright eyes. When I write him, uh, write about it, I was only 30 years old uh, when I wrote this novel. Right now, I am close to 60 years old. So in this, this novel, this black kid, he's just this age. And uh, maybe my old hometown, uh, so the, so the writer, I cannot, uh, um, i getting old and uh, the, uh, to have this young time. So in our, in our hometown, old, 60 years old are considered old men, old, 60 years. Um, so old people and had an old face and also your dignity. So right now, this age, uh, the old age is still keep extending. In Beijing, 60 years old, still very young. So maybe I'm 60 years old. I don't feel as old. I still feel full of hope. And, uh, and also I feel there was a bright future in front of me. Uh, in the novel, the, the black kids, from the beginning, he didn't say any words. Some people think he is uh, he's mute, but but actually he's not mute. When I write this novel, when, it, when I write this novel, at the end of the novel, he just say one word. But at the end, this word is very hard to say. So maybe I would decide that he won't say any words. But he could say something, but I decide he won't say anything. So, uh, because he is very sharp, his ear can hear, can he hear the hair falling on the floor. His eye can see things people cannot see. He, he also has a very uh, super nature, super power and to stop them the pain. Even in the local winter, people wear jacket and shivering. He can uh, be naked, only have a short trouser and uh, you, won't any, you won't feel anything. He can feel a whole uh, dirty, uh, hard iron on his hands. He, his hands has a, a smoke come out. 
people shocked by his action, his behavior, but uh, he has no pain at all. So this kid has a superpower. So in our daily life, you, you be hard to see this kind of person. So why I write this kind of character? Why? Yo, one critic said, uh, uh, have some shadow on myself, the writer. So when I was young, uh, in my hometown, I, uh, I worked with a, a blacksmith. I was assistant for this. I uh, worked for him. I uh, uh, work with on the uh, iron, but I don't have such such super power like uh, the black kids. I don't have the uh, sharp ears. I don't have bright ears. I didn't see any uh, uh, things like him. So I I was very afraid of uh, cold in the winter. So the black kids definitely not me. So the black kids is. Um, it's the, the miniature of the generation uh, in, my, in my generation. So the origin is like uh, uh, the generation. Uh, the kids grow up in the village in the north in China. We have, uh, we have a lot of pain. We witness a lot of uh, things that people didn't witness. We experience uh, our hardship and the tolerance, endurance, and we have achieved what we achieved today. In China, there was four TV uh, station. They broadcast my uh, my novel, that featured my novel, uh, the Red uh, Stratum Clam. At that time, Zhang Yimou uh, was uh, uh, directed this 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 film was 90 minutes. So right now, my hometown TV station has a 60 episode of this soap opera. Also, the, it was very popular. The rating was very high. People, uh, people think it was really good. People some it's not good. So this kind of credit, maybe that's why I make this uh, rating, the TV uh, rating so high. People think uh, this TV show is very good. Maybe people won't be interested in watching this TV show. So if people think the TV show is not good, nobody want to see it. So, so, so it's an extreme uh, credit. So people will want to see themselves. So maybe TV show one, their, their rating uh, to be higher. They will have some credits to say good or bad. So the writer want to uh, Maybe a credit uh, will say something good and something bad, and the, the book sale will go up. So, so credit, maybe a bad credit is not the best thing. So, so no, some, nothing extreme is not good. So that exists in our daily life. So the dress uh, subram is a historical uh, story. The real story happened in 70 years ago. Yesterday, when I get off the plane, I went to, yes, they have a theme to uh, 70 years after World War, I, World War II, based on the real stories to uh, write the novels. So we write an article, uh, uh, so the dress uh, sarum is the novel. The, the base, uh, the real event. So I write uh, to, uh, to, to celebrate this. So in my hometown, the this bridge has become a sightseeing hotspot because uh, Zhang Yimou uh, uh, featured this uh, bridge in his movie. So the, the TV so, so opera also uh, uh, film shoot this uh, bridge, the stone bridge. So this has become a um, very famous uh, sightseeing spot. Uh, this became in my hometown. So a lot of uh, kids went to visit this little bridge uh, to our hometown. So to uh, this stories. So if I want to say about the stories, uh, maybe you can go to uh, read this book. 
So in 1938, there is a, a war and combat in this place. The, so uh, it's by the communist. So it's not by the bandit. It's by the communist bandit. So, so at that time, uh, it was a Kuomintang. Uh, Kuoming so, so at that time, their stem was never steady. So, but they are uh, fighting against the Japanese. So, the Japanese war, uh, the eight years war, there are a lot of topic story to talk about. So, in the fiction, there are a lot of characters in these books. The f most famous one, most uh, memorable characters. Uh, is my grandmother. But the, the, uh, the grandmother in my book is that grandmother, my real grandmother. As a matter of fact, there's a huge difference. Uh, and every, uh, you see my grandmother, uh, my, uh, you see that um, uh, uh, in, the, in the play, you see that a lot of characters are very you, you see that in my books, my grandmother, uh, when she was young, uh, was very sensual, was able to attract a lot of men. But uh, the, in real life, uh, my grandmother actually was a very traditional uh, woman who lived uh, in a small village. And uh, uh, but uh, in my uh, book, my gra my grandmother uh, uh, only uh, sim uh, similarity was my real grandmother uh, because both of them ha uh, had the last name and died. So uh, where did I find this uh, grandmother in my book? Uh, one of the prototype is for my aunt. Uh, my aunt, uh, in her uh, in her teenagers around 16 and 17, uh, had a uh, arranged marriage and was married. To the man was a leper, and this part actually. Uh, was very similar to what I have described in book. At the time when she was 16 or 17, she was very beautiful. When she heard that uh, her future husband had a leper, she was uh, very unhappy. At the uh, time, a leper uh, was actually a life sentence. Uh, people heard that uh, you have a leper. They feel that uh, you are a snake, you are the tiger. They are trying to avoid you. But my uh, aunt uh, read a lot of Confucius books uh, and uh, she uh, knew that uh, sh uh, the marriage was arranged on this uh, there was a, a terrible reason you cannot uh, cut off uh, the agreement so unfortunately uh, this young girl uh, was uh, married to this a uh, man was a leper, and uh, later she had uh, children, but uh, that uh, became the beginning of uh, her uh, terrible fate. Uh, when she was 40 years old, she was already uh, very sick. At the time, she had already had uh, a heart disease. My mother actually told her, my God, you have terrible fate. So by uh, she didn't live uh, to 50s. Uh, another uh, product about my uh, grand. Mother uh, was from another aunt. Uh, her husband uh, uh, went to Taiwan after the revolution. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the aunt had just married, so she was abandoned back in China, back in the hometown, all alone by herself. But later, she had uh, two uh, children. Uh, her uh, Mother-in-law and uh, daughter, in, uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law would never accept those two children. But my aunt never forgot about her responsibilities and obligations. She always came home to see her uh, mother-in-law and the father-in-law. Uh, at the time when you had uh, two uh, children of the way, like nobody could accept you. A lot of people uh, said a lot of bad things about her, and her mother-in-law uh, and uh, her father-in-law would never accept her. But she kept her dignity. And uh, uh, as we Chinese say, her back was always straight, and she always looked very clean, even though she uh, uh, didn't have uh, very expensive clothes to wear. To this day, she's 90 years old. She's still very healthy. 
So from her aunt, I felt deeply the virtue of Chinese women who are able to uh, suffering, but um, and at the same time maintain their dignities. Uh, my, uh, so for both my aunts, uh, have become uh, the prototypes of uh, my grandfather, uh, grandmothers in the book. And uh, as far as the prototype for my grandfather, it's totally different. My uh, grandfather was actually a carpent, uh, carpenter. When the Japanese came, uh, so uh, a lot of uh, uh, farmers are afraid. Uh, they heard that the Japanese uh, came to the village. They actually immediately uh, took their uh, 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 the water buffaloes and to hide. My grandfather said, no, I'm not going to afraid. Uh, I say that when the Japanese uh, came, I will uh, try to, uh, I will not leave. I will stay here. When the, the Japanese uh, came and uh, asked uh, uh, my uh, grandfather where uh, are the communist troops, my uh, grandfather said, I don't know. And uh, the uh, Japanese uh, soldiers uh, uh, sliced uh, uh, her head uh, to cut uh, with a knife, and uh, the blood was profusely uh, flowing down to my uh, grandson's, uh, uh, my granddaughter's, uh, my grandfather's face. So from now on, when she heard, he heard the uh, Japanese uh, came. He ran first instead of uh, uh, not running. Because, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my grandfather was a very talented man. But uh, in the uh, Red Sogan uh, claim, uh, she, uh, I described him as a hero. And he was fighting a uh, Japanese. And so a lot of my characters are based upon certain uh, people I knew. At the beginning, I always, always use their rema real names. Uh, I always thought that uh, oh, after I finish this book, I'm going to change their uh, names. But after I finished uh, my books, it, it was too difficult to change all the names. Uh, because if you want to change this name, you have to do it over again. So it was too much for me. And so the book was published and uh, was uh, being played in a movie. Uh, some of the people uh, read or uh, uh, watched the movie. So, oh my god, I am in a movie. They came to see my father. I say, how come your son described me this horrible way? I'm, and they say that I'm dead. I'm actually alive. My father immediately uh, gave him a cigarette and uh, please, uh, let's have a drink. And uh, my father would say that, uh, uh, come on, a lot of people have the same names. Uh, besides, my, uh, the first time my, uh, my son uh, wrote about my uh, father and they say that I was a sea of a bandit. My God, I am not a bandit. And uh, so my uh, my father told me, please, from now on, don't use the real names of the other people because you bring me too much trouble. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, when uh, Red Sogan claim uh, was uh, adopted to become a soap pop, uh, the names uh, were all changed. Uh, I actually adopted a name uh, whose name is uh, um, Chao Zhongmin. Uh, he was a real character uh, in the Republic, but uh, so I changed the same as a Mr. Zhu, uh, because I was afraid the descendant of Mr. Cao will come to uh, look for me. Uh, and uh, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are going to say that um, uh, Mr. Cao uh, was a very good official, and uh, but, uh, actually uh, you wrote him as a corrupt officer. Uh, people knew he was corrupt, but at least his descendant didn't think this way. Uh, so when my uh, fictions were adopted into the movies or uh, uh, soap operas, uh, it is a great political sensibility uh, how to change their names, how I can uh, keep uh, their uh, prototype uh, characters. In the meantime, I will let them unrecognizable uh, to the people uh, they know. Uh, and uh, data, I uh, uh, had. Uh, I, there are only few characters that I wrote uh, that was very uh, far away from the prototype. One of my books was uh, Big Breast uh, White Hip. Uh, this book was uh, translated in English. Uh, this was translated by the Mr. Howard. And this book, uh, there was uh, a character uh, named Niao Han. 
1943, uh, he was uh, uh, ca captured by Japan, and uh, he was uh, sent uh, to Japan and uh, became a miner uh, to work in a mine in Japan, and uh, he escaped. And in, uh, but when he escaped, he uh, hid in the mountains in the nature in Japan and befriending uh, was animals. And he continued uh, to live in uh, the wild for 15 years until uh, 1958. Uh, he was discovered uh, by a Japanese hunter and he was uh, sent back to China. Uh, this character uh, was closely uh, adopted by uh, me. Uh, this uh, character was a real uh, farmer uh, in my hometown, Gaoming. Uh, his name was uh, uh, Wu Lian Ren. Everybody actually, uh, uh, if you have the certain age, knew about this guy. Uh, and uh, it, it, today, you went to uh, you go to the library, you still could find uh, his story. And um, his real life was the, the similar uh, from what I described in the book. In 1943, he was captured by Japan. He was sent to the Japan, uh, north of Japan. He hid in the uh, mountain and, and nature. And uh, he uh, lived all along uh, for over a decade. And he was found by hunter and was sent back to uh, China. In 1985, I went to his home to visit him. Uh, at the time, he was like uh, in his 70s. He was very healthy. He was uh, able to carry two uh, pails of waters, uh, walking uh, like uh, a 20 years old man. Uh, so as a matter of fact, uh, the time he spent uh, in Japan, uh, wilderness, and did not hurt his health. There uh, were a lot of stories about him. Uh, uh, there was uh, some story that uh, how he fought uh, was a wild animal, how he fought with a bear uh, in the nature in Japan. Uh, when I uh, wrote about him in my book, I actually uh, uh, wrote about him uh, fighting with a wolf. Uh, so one of the translator, Japanese translator, asked me. Uh, this Japanese translator said that uh, there was no wolf in that area in Japan. And uh, where do you find the wolves in ja north of Japan? I said, from my head. Okay. Uh, so uh, that uh, 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 they uh, uh, might have uh, overlaps between the uh, real per uh, people and uh, my characters, but sometimes uh, there are huge differences between them. Uh, as I have already told you several characters uh, uh, before, but some of the characters uh, uh, are built uh, from my imaginations uh, on the prototype. Uh, I had uh, one of the book, uh, Life and Death uh, Wells Me Out, uh, which was uh, also translated in English. Uh, there uh, was uh, there's a character uh, whose name was called uh, Blueface because he had a like birthmark that was like blue, you know. Uh, so people uh, call him nickname uh, Blueface. Uh, uh, this uh, character, Blueface. Uh, refused uh, to uh, join uh, the uh, the uh, work uh, farm uh, in uh, Communist Party because everybody know uh, in uh, in 1940s you have to uh, work uh, in the public shared uh, farm. Uh, uh, in 1949, uh, at the first, uh, the uh, land uh, was uh, privately owned, and by later, the land uh, became a public owned, and so that uh, all the farmers uh, were working on the public lands, which was gathered uh, from the uh, private uh, lands previously assigned to farmers. Uh, so all the uh, farm, uh, farmers would have to uh, join the work br uh, brigade to work on this public farm. And which was one of uh, the uh, result of the revolution, and this was a result of uh, a social movement. Uh, as uh, an ordinary people, you could not fight uh, the win of the social movement. As my investigation, I find that 80% uh, more of uh, farmers uh, uh, thought that they have to uh, work uh, into the uh, work brigade to work on the public uh, land. But some of them uh, did not want to join the work uh, brigade to work on uh, 
a public uh, land, but the blue face refused to uh, join the uh, work baguette. He uh, won the work by, on his own. He continued the struggle until 1980s. And after the uh, reform orphanage, uh, the public, uh, uh, the uh, work brigade uh, was disbanded. And uh, right now, uh, the, uh, at that time, uh, the land uh, was uh, distributed uh, uh, to uh, farmers again. Until 1980s, people start to understand his belief. He alone was fighting against the greater force of the uh, social movement. At the time when he did this, people thought that what he was anti-revolutionary. Later, his story confirmed his belief. That was what I wrote in book. But the, in the real life, that was a real person. He was His last name was also uh, Blue. But uh, uh, his nickname was uh, Rotten Meat. When I uh, went to elementary school, when we had a break, uh, which was uh, last there about 20 minutes, and uh, uh, during the 20 minutes, we could do some exercise uh, uh, outdoor, and then we would hear some very uh, sharp uh, sound, and then we heard a very strange uh, thing showing up in front of us. First of all, uh, there was a woman who uh, had her feet bounded, and she was uh, bringing a, a donkey uh, who had a limp. And uh, uh, this uh, donkey uh, was, uh, was walking with a limp. And uh, this uh, donkey was a uh, uh, who, uh, this, uh, donkey was a limp leg, uh, was uh, carried a, a wooden uh, cart. And the, the, when the wooden car was rolling on the ground, uh, you can see the sharp uh, wheels uh, uh, grinding on the uh, ground. And uh, then you can see that uh, Mr. Lu actually still had uh, that uh, braided, uh, uh, a long braided behind uh, his uh, head. So they uh, were a couple, and uh, they were actually representation of uh, uh, the uh, feudalism before the communist. So uh, as a, uh, kids, we actually uh, loved them, we bullied them. But later, when I started to write the story, they, that, that image continually uh, flow uh, into my mind. So. I always wanted to write him. So finally, when I write the book, uh, Life and Death, uh, Worry Me Out, I adopted his character. And uh, later, I wrote another book, uh, which is uh, Centerwood, uh, Centerwood uh, Death. And uh, the, it was set in the uh, historical time, uh, Qing Dynasty. Of course. Uh, uh, I was not living in the uh, Qing Dynasty. Uh, uh, and uh, back then, when people wrote about uh, the character, they all uh, wrote about condemnments. But the very few uh, people would write about executioners as their main uh, character. Ru Shen was doing uh, one story about an executioner. Uh, but uh, the fact that uh, he did not write the struggling and uh, the uh, emotional side of uh, an executioner. Uh, back in the uh, old time, uh, when there was a beheading, uh, they uh, were attract a huge clouds, and uh, uh, many of people who are uh, standing in the clouds uh, uh, were watching the beheading, and uh, the condemned men would shout, oh my god, 20 years later, after you behead my head, I will become a man again. And then the executioner, uh, of course, uh, whose profession was to execute uh, uh, the condemned the man. We, uh, most of the people uh, did not understand how they felt about ex execution. This kind of person. At that time, uh, there was a retired cop. He uh, was uh, he execute execute a lot of people. He killed a lot of people. So. See, in his heart, he feels some kind of uneasy. So he uh, tell him, because he said, I'm not killing someone. I'm just doing my job. I'm a cop. I have killed 
bad guys. If I don't kill someone, someone will kill. So he had excuse. So he feel okay. So later, after he, one of the person he is secured, it was not a bad guy. He was a hero. So when we learn about this, when he learn about it, what he think, he will feel re sense of regret or feel kind of bad about himself. But in fact, he didn't feel about bad. He still feel very easy. So he killed a bad person. That is not his fault because he, he is doing his job. So I write this kind of a person, this character. These are his historical characters in the Qing Dynasty. But because this character uh, has a, uh, is a phototype in our daily life, so has some kind of modern character. In fact, writing the old uh, people in the ancient time, but it's actually this person right next to us. So I hope reader can identify uh, those those historical character can identify in your daily life. I write other people's story. You can think about your own story. Why um, I keep saying about those uh, process uh, in my writing, the reason why I want to tell you, share my uh, idea, no matter how a uh, talented writer, you cannot escape from your real life. So the fiction, you can write a lot of good things, it can, a lot of uh, supernatural things. But just a person, you cannot pull your own hair and uh, you know get rid of everything. A writer, you cannot get rid of your own daily life. Secondly, my, my life is based on the village in northern China. A lot of people in China, the animals, uh, the plants and people. So if you want me to write the people from south, the city in the south, or I cannot do a good job. Uh, the red sorrow uh, clam, uh, the character there, I'm very, very familiar with that. So I think the reader, uh, after reading this novel, you can identify, uh, or you can, when you go to the Red Sorum, you can identify that. So I read, the, I wrote about the Red Forest. I cannot find a feeling, so I just write the Red Sorum. <laughs> so horse, uh, pig, or animals, I can write, I did it. Very good. It's just like my my uh, my siblings. I'm familiar with them. I was a shepherd. Uh, I raised uh, pigs and I raised uh, blocks. But you want me to write camels or panda or uh, kangaroo from Australia. I don't think I could do a good job. I only see them in the zoo. I don't know those uh, animals. So thirdly, the f in the fiction, there are a lot of construction. So we have to master the language and the, the construct, uh, construction and the, the build the characters. The most important things, you have to base on the characters, the, the real vivid characters. The, in China, uh, uh, Sun Chongwen, uh, our famous writer, uh, always said, how you have to base on the character to write the fiction novels. So in our daily life, we uh, have a lot of events. We hear a lot of stories. We also want to uh, write those events or characters into our fiction. But even even we emphasize too much on the story, that you're not believable. In the real life, people will not believe that your story, the most important things, you have to close to the character, write the characters as the main, the basic of writing fiction, and it's better than writing just story alone. When we write the characters, you have, you have to ignore the, the labels 
or good character or bad characters, even a bad guy, you have to write it as a human being. If a good guy, if the morality is very high, you have to also focus on their positive other than uh, the, the right, some negative parts other than the uh, negative part. So uh, the hero that hit the war, uh, tiger, so they have a negative character as well. Some bad guys in their heart, they have some uh, good uh, incident in their mind. Some killer, so maybe sometimes they have something good in their mind. So we have to cover every side of human being. We cannot ide too idealistic and too stereotype. So in this way, the fiction, you can uh, uh, get rid of uh, those kind of restriction in terms of regions. So in my fiction, I have to write a lot about animals. Uh, the characters of the animals and the appearance of the animals. Actually, I write animals uh, based on human beings. So those uh, animals are people. They, they look like animals, but actually they act like human beings. So the writer has to keep continue writing and overcome your own preference. You have to uh, deal with different kind of people. You have to deal with uh, people you like. You have also deal with people you don't like. The, those people you don't like, the more likely those people will become the character in your novels. So for instance, as someone who keeps criticizing me, in my mind, I don't like this person. He criticized me. He criticized my bad part, but I did some good thing. I saved someone's life, you criticize me. So I don't like this person. So one day, uh, this person uh, hold uh, his uh, uh, kid's hand and take a walk. And he's this bad guy in my mind, he was very kind to his own daughters, his kids. He's a very good father. So I think this kind of observation so helped me a lot when I write about bad guy. Uh, for me, it's a bad guy. But for his own family, for his fam friends, he maybe is a good guy. So anybody has a many different sides. So we have to deal with them and observe and uh, think so you can write a real character to demonstrate the, the fullness, uh, richness of a human being. I said I'm a story writer. In fact, I'm also a good observer and a researcher. I reach my own characters. Only by understanding yourself, you can understand others. Of course, only by understanding yourself, your own situation or your shortcomings, then you can uh, forgive uh, those uh, uh, character of those bad guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, uh, have uh, uh, people line up um, in front of the uh, mic in the aisles. We have uh, another mic over there, right? Yeah. Um, if you have questions for Mo Yan. Um, <laughs> We don't have a lot of time left, so I'm going to ask you to uh, speak briefly and also, uh, if you don't mind, stating your name and your school. All right. Um, I'm going to start from the left. Are you a member of the Undergraduate Committee on Global Thought? So um, the first question will go to this student. You may start. Hi, my name is Jeff, and I'm representing Jeff. the Undergraduate Committee on Global Thought. 
Um, I'll be doing this in two parts, just first in English, then in Chinese, for convenience. Um, hi, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for being here today, and we're very excited to see you speak. Uh, my question for you is, many of your prior works have focused on life in China of the older, gen older generation. But as we know, the China of the 60s and 70s is very different from the China that we see today and the China that continues to rapidly evolve. So will your future work um, also evolve to reflect these changing conditions of the contemporary Chinese society? And if so, how will you go about doing this? Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll reflect this kind of change. So as a uh, writer, how do you describe or portray uh, to under further understand the Chinese society, uh, the current uh, situation? So, in fact, in our past work, right about allowed a lot of rapid change in China recently. I just told uh, uh, that I wrote my uh, red sorum as, uh, until 2001, and also in 2001, I had a, a Nabola, uh, whose uh, name was uh, the the name of the book was a chan, uh, change. It was from my personal view, what I have uh, observed, a change in uh, Chinese society uh, f from uh, social and economic aspect and the family change and uh, the uh, moral change. Of course, in the future, uh, in my book, I, have, I will uh, write about all these changes because a writer has to write uh, his time. If uh, a writer doesn't understand the change in his time, uh, then uh, this, his work doesn't mean anything. And the most important, I feel that uh, uh, it's not only objective change, it has to be uh, the uh, mental uh, change, uh, mind change. And uh, of course, in society, as material has uh, been uh, enriched, uh, the so uh, society has evolved and it affects everybody else. But when you talk about change, uh, I will emphasize on this change and especially uh, the mental change. And um, uh, my name uh, is Gubernang. I'm a, a student, a doctor program from the uh, business uh, school. Now, first, uh, Question: uh, 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 What uh, what is the challenge for the Chinese literature to be accepted in the uh, international uh, world? And number two: uh, How the uh, Nobel Prize uh, has affected your life? Uh, number one. As far as you talk about Chinese uh, literature, uh, I mean, you mean uh, contemporary type of, uh, Chinese uh, literature. You are talking about uh, the literature after uh, 1978 or 1980s. Uh, the literature uh, in, uh, in the this uh, period uh, uh, was interpreted uh, by a uh, two different opinions. Uh, one school believed that uh, the, uh, the literature in this area uh, was uh, very good. The other school uh, be, uh, thought that uh, the contemporary uh, Chinese literature uh, was not good. Uh, those literature uh, did, uh, could not compare with the high qualities of uh, uh, the uh, Western uh, literatures. I myself, I actually uh, uh, thought that the, the first school of uh, thought was more accurate. Might be because I am one of the writers. I feel that uh, in uh, those period, uh, uh, Chinese uh, has accomplished a lot in uh, literature, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, fiction and the novella, uh, novella. If you read those books are written by the Chinese, in terms of uh, death and uh, characters and the richness of uh, life, uh, you will find that the quality is just as good as uh, the quality uh, in the Western world. I would say that it's even one of the best uh, in the international. Uh, literatures. Second question, sir. Uh, how uh, did the uh, world uh, affect my life? Yes, my life has changed a lot. I suddenly have many, many new friends. 
Of course, uh, uh, this uh, gave me some advantage. For instance, I when I wait in line, people say, oh, no, you don't have to wait in line. Go ahead. Of course, there are some disadvantages. Before, I was not so well known. I could do some bad thing, you know. Uh, people would overlook, and now everybody actually pick everything I, I, I do. So I have to be careful with every action I take. I, but I think uh, all the fame is always uh, a surface. I think uh, most important is in my heart, you uh, were never changed. Uh, you, I don't think because I uh, win a Nobel Prize, I suddenly I become somebody else. I always remember I'm a son of a farmer. Uh, it doesn't matter. Today I'm sitting here, I wear a suit. In my bone, in my heart, I am still a writer. I'm still an ordinary Chinese because a future, how they look at you, they don't care whether you won the prize or not. They always judge you by your books and whether you are your books are better than the books you wrote before. And uh, that is what I've been uh, struggle in last two years. So it doesn't. It doesn't matter whether you, uh, the whether you are famous or not. Uh, when you write a, a book, you have to have a, a thick face. You don't. You don't have to worry about being criticized. Uh, so uh, right now, people are asking me, "Oh, are you still writing?" I'm like, "Of course, I'm writing." As a matter of fact, I've finished, but I'm too afraid because now I'm famous. I'm worried to be uh, targeted and criticized. Uh, my name is Deng Tianyuan. I'm. Uh, uh, study in art in Columbia Uni uh, School. Uh, my question is that uh, uh, Chairman uh, uh, Xi uh, emphasized on the value of uh, art, and you, you also attempted uh, uh, the uh, his uh, speech, and uh, he was talking about the art uh, should not uh, destroy the uh, social moral. I just wonder, in uh, your personal point of view. Uh, because right now people have a high expectation on art. Uh, how do you th uh, think that uh, about this definition of art as uh, a curbing uh, a power uh, against the uh, negative society, uh, negative uh, uh, force in society? I first of all I have to say that uh, when I was invited, I was uh, it was kind of suddenly. Because when I uh, received the notice, it, I, it was like uh, on 13. So I, uh, uh, and on 14, I uh, went to a TV uh, station and uh, in Shandong. But uh, when I was in Shandong, they told me to come back in Beijing to attend a very important meeting. I said, no, no, no. I had uh, already set up this appointment with the uh, TV station. Uh, and they say, no, you have to come back to Beijing. So every, everything happened so quickly. Uh, number two, when I uh, went into the meeting, I was very calm, very relaxed. Everybody uh, didn't think that meeting was very serious. Everybody was just chatting like old friends. Uh, Chairman Xi uh, did not uh, follow uh, uh, his draft. He uh, was actually uh, talking about his own experience, what books he read when he was a teenager. He read a lot. And in the meeting, I, I felt that uh, the main point of his speech uh, was the same as all these uh, points made by the previous leaders. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we used to have uh, like a writer association or, or art association. At the end, uh, conclusion of a con uh, the association, the leader of uh, our country uh, will make a speech. And uh, the leader will always say that uh, uh, the art has to uh, enhance uh, the moral of the society, have to enrich of uh, people's uh, life. So I didn't feel that what he said was something new. And uh, what he said gave me some pressure. But two sentences he said uh, left a vivid impression. And uh, number one, he said that uh, as a writer, uh, creation is essence of a writer. Uh, number two, a uh, work uh, is your uh, uh, is uh, what uh, your life. So it's very easy. If you are a writer, your uh, mission is creation. Number two, uh, it doesn't matter what you say uh, through your lips. Your work is your life. Only your work can uh, show who you are, uh, your accomplishment. 
I think in the next two years, I am not going to attend a lot of conferences. I'm going to com uh, concentrate on creations because my mission is to create, to write. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Mo Yan, uh, I am uh, uh, the graduate student from the Asian study. I uh, learned a lot from your speech today. I also uh, write about, uh, I also write fiction. I feel writing uh, is an expression of uh, what uh, is in your soul. But once when you have to share uh, your work with others, others may not understand what you're trying to convey, trying to express. And also, there's a public market whether it will accept your work. So I'm asking you. Uh, uh, whether you uh, find the gaps between what you expressed uh, and uh, what will be accepted, and uh, whether you compromise uh, in order to bring the, uh, uh, build a bridge over that gap. And the last question, uh, uh, may I uh, uh, submit my book for you to read? Uh, 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 if you want to give, uh, let me read your book, I will be very happy. OK, uh, later, later, you give it to me, not right now, OK? And uh, this is great because tonight I I, I have I can read your book. <laughs> as far as uh, creation, uh, to consider uh, acceptance by readers. Uh, okay, it will be a lie if I say that I don't consider the uh, readers' uh, acceptance. As a writer, of course, we all want to be accepted by readers. We want to be complimented. We love to uh, be uh, accepted. But. Uh, you cannot have uh, a reader's point of view as your sole uh, guidance. Uh, you try to write a popular book. It turns out the book was uh, is not popular. But sometimes you don't care. You just write a book. You don't care about what uh, writers will think. And actually, your book become very popular. So I think when you write, if you want to please readers, I think that's a bad thing. But when you write, you are uh, faithful to what you have to express, in, and you added uh, uh, something, uh, humor, uh, so that the readers can be more enjoyable. That's different. And uh, uh, third, creation, uh, innovation. Then you have to take a risk. When you write something new, a lot of people may not understand uh, your new creation. Uh, but you know uh, what you write is important. Then you should take that chance. Uh, but, uh, for instance, if you want to uh, uh, write uh, the Ulysses, uh, uh, Ulysses uh, is a great uh, book. Uh, I myself didn't understand that book. But uh, the uh, James Joyce did not sacrifice his uh, point of view uh, and uh, not to write Ulysses. Okay, uh, Mr. Moore, you talk about there was a troop in the Red Sogan claim. And you talk about uh, this uh, troop uh, belonged to Kuomintang, and later the uh, troop uh, then uh, belonged to a communist. Are you saying that this troop uh, did not know what party uh, it belonged, or it was because uh, this troop uh, was like a, a willow, and uh, because uh, uh, the communist uh, was winning, and uh, the troop uh, then uh, became loyal to communists. Well, the war, the parties, are, uh, be, the loyalties you, be, uh, you uh, belong is very complicated. Of course, when the Japanese came to China, nah, uh, we are all against Japan. Um, uh, so you, uh, 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 so everybody uh, pick up the arm trying to uh, fight uh, Japan. But before I give you this uh, example, uh, the troop uh, who first become Kuomintang and the troop become uh, 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 the communist. Why? Because every back then, these two opposite forces uh, were trying to uh, enlarge its numbers of troops. Uh, so 
uh, at the uh, first, uh, these troops uh, belong to Kuomintang. When the communists came, and they say, "Okay, I give you a better benefit. I will give you this of uh, uh, job. Uh, you uh, uh, just you become my communist." Uh, okay, the the troops say, "Okay, fine." And then the Japanese came. I say, "I give you a new job. I give you a new title. How about you become a Japanese troop?" Fine. They say, "Okay, great. This is a good." Uh, okay, and then. Uh, for a month later, oh, he, he, uh, this troop saw that uh, the Japanese was uh, losing. He would say, oh, no, 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 I'm, I should not stick my neck uh, with the uh, Japanese who was uh, losing. So uh, they were trying to find uh, what eventually would be winner and who would uh, give uh, the troop uh, best benefit. Okay, we ran out the uh, uh, time. Um, uh, okay, uh, I'm so. Uh, we're running uh, on the other side. All right, this is going to be the last question. All right? Please, please. Uh, Mr. Mo, uh, I'm very honored to uh, listen to your speech. I, uh, I am a teacher from Henan University. Uh, I am a visiting uh, scholar uh, at uh, Columbia's uh, educational department. I want to ask you a question. Uh, uh, when we criticize education, we always say that uh, in China, uh, how many uh, we have a great uh, uh, system? How come we don't have only very few uh, Nobel Prize winners? So I want to congratulate you. you have won the Nobel Prize. Uh, my question is that uh, I think life sometimes is very absurd. I think uh, uh, you had never uh, graduated from the elementary school. Uh, you only studied on your own, and you read all the stories in the village. Uh, my question is, what do you think about uh, today's education reform uh, in China, and what would be your suggestions? The education is a very professional question uh, in China. We all know education, we have a lot of people have different opinions in China. It's a big burden on kids. So the high, uh, entrance exam is the decision maker. So there's a lot of criticism out there, a lot of measures to prevent. So people still have different opinion. I still don't know. I went to a middle school. I said one year. So the entrance exam is not a good thing. So the high school is the the you, the source of your pain. So the kids was very happy to hear that. So without without the entrance exam, probably will be worse because it's a fair. So a lot of rural kid people from rural. So a lot of kids have a chance. It's equal. So so the entrance exam is a is a fair process. So in the future, the re innovation in the education, I think in a middle school, you have to have your own concentration. So the kids, maybe it's good of uh, arts, uh, not good in science. So you should, in the middle school, to have them study arts rather than science. So there's another question. Another question: How do you, uh, you know, deal with old kids? So education reform is not my expertise. So many people in China, the education issue, uh, people have different opinion. So I'm not as expert on this. So Nobel Prize. It's nothing to do with the education system. So the arts or literature, in fact, you don't need to have a lot of knowledge. You, ju you just need to uh, understand 1,000 one, one characters. More character you know, the, the more trouble. So you, the experience your life. Uh, so in college, you study literature, the, learn some, a lot of classic. So I have a, I don't have, I don't have a high education, but I also went to study in a college. So I don't, I'm not a person to define the college education. So I cannot answer your question. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll
。是再两个问题哈，呃，呃，谢谢。莫老师这样呢，我是也是在哥大教育学院，目前呢进行博士学习。啊、uh, ，I'm also my husband is、uh, work at the Shandong TV station. So last year or year before, the we the Red Sorghum uh was uh become a adult、uh, become a TV show. So my husband actually was in charge of this soap opera, the production. Uh, he was uh, the executive producer. So I have some question. Recently, the restaurant uh, broadcast, well, the rating was very high, so create a lot of、uh, revenue for the TV station. But this this opera has a, a lot of uh, adaptation, uh, adaptation in this uh, this this book. So so this uh, the theme. Uh, the revi revise. Uh, so it was not uh, uh, true to your novel. So what's your、uh, take on that? So the soap opera, in fact, so they add more. Zhang Zhang Yimou at that time, they uh, uh, elite, they need something. So there's a lot of plot plot uh, in the book. They so in the soap opera they will add something. So the TV show,、uh, they don't have enough. They have 60 episodes. It's very long. So they have to、um, add some characters or become a, a major characters. So one or two sentences in my novel, they will create the major theme. I think this is necessary. So when I came here, I saw 20 episodes. They still broadcasting it. So 20 episodes, that was pretty good stories. So are those are small characters?、Uh, I think、uh, we'll be getting、uh, more and more uh, interesting. Uh, so in that way, so all those war scenes. At that at that time, even the war time or peace time, so those conflict and uh, those uh, uh, love affair and facing Japanese people, I think later on will be even more interesting. Last question. How are you?、Uh, I was at Saint Wang University. Also,、oh, the、uh, Columbia University didn't invite me to、uh, for lunch. I give you,、uh, I give you some、uh, subject you can write in the fiction. So in the picture. So those、uh, engineering.、Uh, so the engineering education, how to impact on China's education. Education have influenced Chinese history. Could you write a novel about that? What would it be like? So, 2001.、Uh, at that time, I came here. I came to New York. So he drove me to、uh, to somewhere for a lecture. We find a parking lot. So we took it one hour to find a parking space. So Mr. Jin, so invite us to、uh, stay with them for one night at that time. So I saw that. Because their bathroom, so it was very bright. The light bulb was very, very bright. So you can see very clearly on the one hair on the floor. So I let Mr. We went to we get off. So his son, I forgot his son in the car. So he、uh, knocked the glass、uh, on the on the in the car. So we so the kids probably、uh, in the college now,、uh, Mr. Jin's son. So when you raise this question in China, so maybe you write an engineer in the novel, the Chinese engineer in China. In the fiction, 
So a lot of a number write about the uh, people in the village. So we are from village. Either from so we probably was a uh, semi-professional uh, uh, farmers. So I think what the technical people. Now, so many people feature uh, engineer in their book. So uh, this kind of writer, we are settling out the stage. So newcomers, new writer, are coming. They uh, they are write, they are coming from the technology background. So they probably write, do a good job in writing engineering. I also imagine I write about some uh, factory. I visit factories, plants. So how do I write the right feeling? The I can write about, about a farm and uh, plants or animals. So and I have to write about iron, a uh, bridge, so about the concrete, it's about design. How do they, those of close stuff to become vivid? You have to have a certain experience. I, in the, uh, a worker in the Shenzhen, he wrote a lot, a lot, a lot about poet, poetry. He wrote the, he wrote a feeling that when you work in a factory, those machinery, those plants. So if I want to do a good job in engineering, I, do, I have to have some background in technology or, or plant. Uh, in this kind of environment and uh, interaction with people, this is the key factor. So I don't know how to answer you. <laughs> I wish we could continue this conversation, but time is up. And I just wanted to mention one thing. Um, in 2009, when we invited Mo Yan to uh, come and give a talk, uh, he also interacted with our students and faculty. And at that time, he was still finishing his book, the latest book, which has been translated now um, in, into English and available. It's called uh, Life and Death are wearing me out. And so we asked him last time he was here, five years ago, what he was doing, what he was writing. He said he was writing about birth control. At that time, he didn't have a title for the novel. So I'm going to ask him what he's working on now and see if he will have an answer for us. Uh, the first time, uh, yes, I was around uh, the uh, the life and uh, uh, the death uh, uh, tiredness, and uh, I also uh, wrote about flock. I forgot about uh, this book. Uh, the the one of the characters was uh, my uh, uh, daughter, and uh, that book was a flock. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, this uh, the book uh, this uh, the not my daughter, actually it's my aunt. My aunt actually was a midwife. And uh, I actually based upon the prototype on her. And uh, But uh, this aunt is uh, totally different from the, what I express in the book. Uh, so I remember uh, one time a Japanese uh, uh, reporter uh, 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 came and um, and um, a Japanese asked uh, some uh, uh, her question, and uh, my uh, my aunt uh, was trying to answer a question, but the uncle said, "Don't say it; you will get into trouble." He said, "No, we have to speak the truth." So, as far as my next book, at this point, I'm not in the liberty to tell you. I'm not at the liberty to tell you. Because uh, not long ago, uh, in the conference, I attended uh, uh, the a conference where uh, uh, Chairman Xi asked me, what are you writing? I said, well, I'm doing some writing. Uh, is it a fiction? I said, no, it's a play. It is true, I'm writing a play. Uh, basically, I am about to finish this play as far as the subject of this play. I can only uh, give you a little hint. 
is a patriotic person. Uh, this person should not be patriotic, but he is very patriotic. So you are going to read this, uh, uh, my, uh, this play. I have been always thinking about this uh, character for a long time, but play is totally different from fiction. In a lot of my uh, fictions, uh, I have uh, thought about. Uh, uh, I have been thought about it for a long time, and uh, uh, one of the fiction I've been thought about a long time. Uh, the subject was about war. I was thinking about, okay, in this war, both sides had the same slogan. They only go to the war for uh, the for a better uh, of a people, and the both uh, military uh, have uh, uh, advanced the weapons, and they go to the war uh, for the sake of the people. So this is one of my uh, the subject that I'm trying to work on. So I have a lot of inspiration. I'm not going to share you, okay? Oh, if I tell you, then might be you right of one of my ideas. Okay, that's it. Thank you.